If you stop someone in the street out there or in, in any other city in the world and you said to them, who are you? Where do you come from? Where are you going when this is over? And um, what is the nature of reality? We are absolutely connected. There's no question about it. There's no separation. That's been physically proven by science. I think everybody's looking for something that they already have. And I think the reason that we don't notice it is because we are so distracted by the human levels of our experience that we fail to notice what is always sitting there. Once you put out the intent of all the things that I've just described, I want to be the full magnitude of who I am, that intent starts to bring towards you what you need to achieve that intent. And what's the first thing that happens? We do not have empty space between us. We have energy. We have electromagnetic energy. And we have in that energy information. And from that, what I call the biological computer, decodes that information into a sense of reality that we think is solid, but simply cannot be. And now we have mainstream scientists saying, this reality could be just a hologram, exactly what it is. Nikola Tesla, the genius from which so much came, he could see beyond the physical that we perceive. And he said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will be, uh, make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of our existence. Why? Because you go to the source of the reality instead of the decoded expression of that reality. What I call consciousness is like the ocean. Whereas mind, it's the same substance, but it is far more limited. Like ice is the same substance as water, but it's in a completely different and more limited state. And you know, when you look at the, the, the oceans, they say it's the South China Sea. They say it's the South Atlantic, the Indian Ocean, the North Atlantic, same bloody water. But what we do is we give our water, our infinite self names like Ethel Jones and Arthur Smith. And we give them um, identities without realizing that we are just points of attention within one infinite, eternal consciousness. Once you put out the intent of all the things that I've just described, I want to be the full magnitude of who I am. That intent starts to bring towards you what you need to achieve that intent. And what's the first thing that happens? This blueprint, which is creating your daily experience, starts to break down because you put out the intent. I want to be something else. I want to be a greater level of what I am. And how that manifests in your life is often, and it happened with me on a major, major level in, in full public glare in England in the early 90s, is that your life appears to fall apart. You, you might lose your job. There might apparently be, oh my goodness, my life's falling apart. No, no. The blueprint, energetic blueprint that you have been working on, the thought blueprint you've been working on, the perception blueprint, which has manifested this life that you clear through your new intent would like to change, is breaking down. And therefore, the life we'd like to change is also breaking down. And, and, and what happens to a lot of people at this point is they go, ooh, I'd like to transform, but not that badly, thank you very much. And they go back into the, into the old way. If you keep with it, what happens if your life is transformed? We are expressing our point of attention as a uniqueness, which is wonderful. A unique personality, a unique person, a unique perspective, a unique point of attention. But at that time, we are connected to all the other points of attention in infinite awareness, which in the end are all us and we are all them. And so when we go to war, we go to conflict, we are fighting ourselves. 
The ocean is the droplet. The droplet is the ocean. Drop the droplet in the ocean. Where does the droplet end and the ocean start? The idea of the conspiracy is to keep that droplet disconnected from the ocean. And when they do that, we have the world that we live in. If you don't become the ocean, you'll be seasick all your life. There are so many elements to this. And when people say, well, why have we known about this before? Well, I've spent 20 years in nearly 50 countries researching a, a, a great stream of different subjects which on the face of it appear completely unconnected and it's only when you connect these apparently unconnectable subjects and areas of society and life that the puzzle pieces fit to the point where you can go Oh, I can see it now. Now, billions of people wake up every morning and they go to work um, or they try to survive another day. Um, they're not spending 20 years fitting these pieces together. So how can they see it? Until I started fitting them together, I couldn't see it. I was very skeptical of authority, always was, and the people who claim to be in power. But this bigger picture, I ain't got a clue. And one of the areas, to come to your question, that I've understood more and more in the last few years, has to be looked at before we can understand the true nature of what's going on in the world. And that's actually the true nature of reality. And how we can control our own reality instead of having our reality dictated to us. And so many people feel this, this ache, this, this sense of disconnection, this sense of longing that they can't put words to because one part of them, one, one level of them knows that we're all one. Everything is all one. So what is the universe? It is information, information decoding information. And form is in form our base state is awareness it doesn't have form it's just awareness but we come into the into the realms of form and form is created from information and so we need to start living the lie and start living the truth of who we really are we are infinite awareness we are not humans that is our experience we are infinite awareness having that experience infinite possibility.